a new town at rest, and a dream springs to mind. A dream shaped by planners and architects and experts in construction. Slowly shaped into the bright reality of Basildon, into the adventure of starting afresh. And this is behind a massive streamlined factory called Carreras. A town at rest, but all night, each of a vast assembly of complex machines plays its individual part towards the production of cigarettes renowned throughout the world. All night, all day, unceasing machines controlled by systems of science that defeat human error, that work at producing millions of cigarettes an hour, day and night. Night and day, the song is sung with an urgency, a new rhythm, an expression of pride in the association of a new factory with new town people. The bright reality of Basildon, the adventure of starting afresh. Here too was adventure. Here too was the excitement of finding a new way of life. This, 400 years ago, was the first settler site of America the James River, the great cypress swamps, capable of deterring the hardiest of hearts. And yet far greater was their fear of the Red Indian. And yet again, it was he who gave the knowledge of growing tobacco the pleasure of smoking it to the colonists whose coming he resented. That fierce resentment forced the colonists on to found Williamsburg. And tobacco was the first commodity they exported to the Europe they had left. Williamsburg, the first city of a fashion founded 400 years ago. On the Potomac River, still in Virginia, stands George Washington's plantation home, Mount Vernon. The pipe of peace must surely have burnt bright here, where, in fact, Washington encouraged the growing awareness of Virginia as a land of tobacco by planting it himself. Tradition in this Scarlet O'Hara country is cherished. It is nurtured to a point, not of sentimentality, but of knowing that the essential character of the Old South is unchanged, kept up to date by the sea of tobacco plantations that still are family affairs, still farmed by families who've known and handed down the art of tobacco growing for generations. Tobacco is a crop that calls for care demands the protection of experienced cultivation from early spring, when the seeds are sown, to the time of harvesting the luscious leaves. It's typical of tobacco that no one can chart its growth. No one can tell beforehand just when the leaves should be picked. That knowledge rests with the feel of farming this delicate crop, and harvesting takes many days. For at first, the lower leaves only are picked, the harvesters returning four or five times to pick each leaf at the precise moment of its maturity. Time now must be allowed the leaf. Time to change itself from green to gold, to the rich Virginia tobacco that experts recognize as the finest produced anywhere. But time alone is not enough. The leaves must be strung on sticks and cured in a way that will start a gradual change, a change controlled to the finest degree, a change that will determine the flavor and quality of the tobacco. The importance, the precision of this careful curing is immense. For here, in 10 days, the slightest mistake could mar a whole year's work, a year that means everything to the farm. For the attention that tobacco requires confines the farms to an average of only six acres, acres that must support the farmer's family and pay his few workers. Now, all that's left is market day for the farmer at least. For the choice Virginian tobacco, its adventure has barely begun.
tobacco towns are many warehouses. Clumsy in appearance, yet nursing a wealth of golden tobacco, they house the frantic activity of market day. The day when a man from Carreras buys best for Basildon. Let's sell the back. 73. 73 down the air. 73 and 4 and 4 and 4 on the air. Press gear. 73 and 4 on the air. 4 and 4 and 3 and 3 down the air. And universal. 73 and 3 and 2 and 2 and 2 down the air. And 2 and 3 and 3 down the air. And universal. 74. And 74 down the air. 4 and 4 and 4 and 4 and 4. Before ever the auction starts, he's chosen the leaf to bid for. His choice backed by the knowledge that nothing is required short of the highest quality. But still careerists demand another check by yet another of their skilled agents to ensure the tobacco about to be processed has been graded in accordance with their own strict standards. In the processing plant, the tobacco is oven treated to extract more moisture before the leaves are packed and shipped 900 pounds of them to a hogshead. Suddenly, we're back in England, brought back by tobacco's journey across the Atlantic to Essex. But this is an Essex slow-paced compared with streamlined modernity, a village unexcitable as tradition. And yet tradition has been excited. The long tradition of tobacco has been flung into the heart of a new town and welcomed by new town people as their way of life. New Basildon, to thousands of its people, has come to mean Carreras. Carreras has come to mean a respected employer, an organization offering its staff superb amenities as part of the policy that has won regard throughout the world. Tobacco's journey across the Atlantic. Those cram-packed hogsheads are now delivered safely into Bond to await the time this new consignment of rich tobacco will be transformed into cigarettes. Every single day, a cheque is drawn to pay the customs duty on the following day's supply of tobacco typical of just one day's duty, a sum that signals the crash of another hogshead and the start of the art of blending. Here, there's a connoisseur's appreciation, acquired through tradition and understanding, of the need for subtle blending. As many as 18 or 20 different varieties of rich Virginia leaf are woven into a completeness that, to the smoker, means a complete flavor and a complete consistency of the brand he favors. Because the tobacco is now dry and too brittle to be worked, warm, moist air must gently be eased through the crushed leaves until they're soft. Only an exact degree of softness means perfectly textured tobacco. So the process is expertly controlled. This is the moment when the actual production of cigarettes begins the moment when the tobacco encounters the first of the long line of machines that take it, change it, and send it on with endless efficiency. Here, the thick, rich tips are cut aside, and what remains is carried on to be threshed. Threshing in the tobacco factory is equivalent to sorting the wheat from the chaff. A fierce current of air separates the stem from the light leaf, which is whisked away.
But now it must rest in the bulking silos that preserve the tobacco's true Virginian flavor. From here, it is taken as required and conveyor sped once more, this time to the guillotine. The rotary guillotine cuts the blended tobacco into what is called rag, strands of an exact thickness that ensure a long, cool smoke. Rag to richness, a free-flowing river of gold. But a part of the river is scooped up, checked by a quality control inspector, one of the many who take samples for analysis from every blend at every stage of their production. To the drying cylinders for final conditioning. And then, right across the factory, the tobacco lightly riding on a cushion of air. More silos for the tobacco to rest in, until it's needed by the cigarette-making machine. That need being determined, as you begin to expect in this most modern of factories, by an electronic control panel. In a world of automation, a man-made fibre is used to make the finest filter achieved by modern research. Made as one continuous tube, and eventually cut to size, Carreras have an obvious interest in the finest available filter. They buy the best leaf and perfect its flavour. So they need a filter that enhances their efforts, that enhances the smoker's pleasure. Research put them among the pioneers of filter cigarettes, and the quality control check helps to maintain their forefront position. Yes, quality controls filters too. The company's quality control laboratories are constantly busy analyzing every aspect of cigarette production, every aspect of cigarette smoking, to be absolutely certain the standards the company has set itself are maintained. Here, an impressive and complex assortment of sensitive apparatus has been devised to ensure accuracy by eliminating human error. The scientific evidence is that careerists have achieved remarkable success in their self-imposed task of offering the smoker every benefit of ceaseless research. The evidence before you is that careerists have smokers more discriminating than man will ever be. Even apart from quality control, there's a Carreras laboratory dedicated to pure research. Research on the character of different leaves of tobacco. Research on filtration. Research on the texture of cigarette paper. Endless research that strives towards a purity of cigarette production that has laid firm foundations in the Basildon plant. But in the midst of scientific experiment, Carreras remember the traditional care of tobacco, the basic skills that have slowly matured since those early days in Virginia. And how would those early Virginians see this application of the old Red Indian art they learnt? And imagine their reaction to this machine, linked through all the making machines, ensuring that each cigarette is standard weight. But return to that moistened, shredded, fine Virginian tobacco. For now it's fed by each giant hopper into the making machines. Machines that take the thousands of filters and arrange for them and the miles of paper and the tobacco to come together in a perfect flow of energy that is the creator of, yes, 2,000 cigarettes a minute for this one machine alone. and think what skill has contributed to this modern mechanical wizardry. Automatic to the point that it only requires to be set in motion, it has care built in. Its built-in disapproval of imperfection means that any cigarette with the slightest fault is immediately rejected.
Despite this brilliant machine's capacity for endlessly producing cigarettes of perfection, still the insistence on absolute thoroughness demands the presence of yet another inspector of quality to take the cigarettes from the machines for yet further tests. Truly, the claim of quality counts. It counts right through to the packaging process, where cigarettes good enough to have passed such thorough inspection are wrapped in their brand name, the name given to a blend different from any other. Blends, brands, that saw their distinction born in America's deep south and grow to maturity through every expert stage. Piccadilly Filter, a cigarette that took its blend from the famous Piccadilly No. 1 and grew to meet the booming demand for filter smoking. Quality control again. Even the pack must be faultless in its efficiency. The cigarettes faultlessly positioned inside. One blend for one brand. Change the blend and that brand becomes the preference of another smoker. Another smoker but one who equally enjoys career as quality. Carrera's care stretches to the limits of the factory in which they achieve so much. How else could the cartons of 200 